My name is Jane Hart. I am 61 years old. It is October the 27th, 2012. We're in Charleston, South Carolina, and I'm here with my dad to talk about growing up in Union, South Carolina. I am Frank Matthew Hart, age, I'm 86 years old this past week. Uh, this is October the 27th, 2012, in Charleston, South Carolina. Jane <coughs> uh, is my oldest daughter, and uh, we have a good relationship. Thank you, Daddy. Well, as you know, I have wanted to record these stories for a long time, so I'm really thrilled that we have this opportunity to sit here and go through this. So I know you and I have talked about, you know, preparing for this, and so you have some really good notes to get started on this with, starting with where and when you were born. Uh, I think maybe a little background on this. My great-grandfather bought a a farm over 100 acres in Union County, South Carolina, down on some people call it Sandy Run, others Peter Hawk Creek in the 1820s. And uh, to validate that, I have a bed, bed spread that was uh, embroidered on it uh, uh, November 27, 1828 by S.H. So that was either Sarah Hart or Sally Hart. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so then I was born in October the 17th, 1926, in a three-room house. That It was the second house on that farm that had been built, and it was built down kind of under the hill near a spring because it didn't have to dig a well at that point with that with the spring water there. Uh, it was a three-room house, and eventually there were six boys and mama and dad and grandpa living in, in the three-room house. Uh, there was a main room there with a fireplace and then the back room with two beds for us and a small bed in there. And the kitchen ran the length of the house, so they put a, a drape in front of that for mom and dad's room in it. Uh, we uh, eventually outgrew that house, and we moved from grand that farm there that daddy inherited on the grandpa's death uh, up to uh, my grandma's farm on my mother's side because it had five rooms to it, and uh, they were large rooms, and so that took care of the family in a much better situation. I think that it's something that I remember about my grandpa is this. The first letters of the alphabet, Jane, that I ever learned was B-U-C-K. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was on a, a walking stick that an Afro-American friend, a neighbor of grandpa's, had it, had, it was out of a dogwood stick with a big curl on it, made it look like a walking stick, and it was a walking stick. And and uh, Buck Moore was the man's name, and he had carved his initials in capital letters. So I remember Grandpa saying B U C K Buck, and uh, they were good friends. And Buck owned a farm, was had one intervention with, intervention with another farm on it, and over there right across the way from us. But the other thing I remember about that and why they did that, I just don't know. But I was either four or five years old, and for some reason I had Grandpa's knife, and I lost it. And uh, his byword was, by Granny. So he said, by <laughs> Granny, boy, where have you been? And so I led him around where I'd been, and we found the knife. But that was the last time he let me borrow his knife. Was it like a little um, fold-up? No, it like was a regular two-blade knife, and it had a red, red, uh, red coloring on the handle. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, the five-room house that we moved into uh, up there. Grandpa Gallman had built it in the six, 1860s, and uh, it had five rooms and a 10-foot breezeway in between the main houses. Now, that was the house that was up at the head of the road, wasn't it, that burned? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, that was the house. Because I remember seeing and, that uh, house. That breezeway was in the summertime. You had a breeze. It made mm -hmm. it cool. When you came in from working in the field, you could kind of stretch out on the front porch, and it went right through and have it a little bit, bit cool at that point mm -hmm. in time. Uh, I, uh, uh, this is uh, something that I, I think it is worthy of this. Uh, 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 June, in particular, one minute to tell this, that... Uh, we had what you call a sprouting axe. That was when you cut sprouts in the field where the tree trunks were there. It had been cut down. And uh, it was out at the woodpile, and John was two years older, and he had an axe out there. And uh, he was uh, 
split and cutting some wood, and I went out there and picked up the sprouting axe. I was in the first grade. Who is John? And, uh, Daddy, who is John? Oh, that was my older brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, older brother. We had there's six of us. It was mm-hmm. Mark Carlisle, James Edward, John D., Frank Matthew, Luke Boyd, and Russell Etheridge. Now, I didn't know that Uncle Ed was James Edward. It was James Edward. I did not know that. Always excuse me, I was using Bible names. I know, I know. (laughs) But, uh, which was true. She had Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. (laughs) Yeah. The, uh, but anyway, I hit this little limb I shouldn't have been out there, and it flipped over in front of him, and when I reached over to get it, he was coming down with the axe, and it hit me in the head with the blade of the axe. Had on a Lindbergh rubber cap, I think, to save my life. <laughs> John started yelling and said, I've killed him, I've killed him, blood was spewing. <laughs> but uh, uh, that Lindbergh cap, it split it, but it saved it. Um, Daddy put me in and went and carried me to the doctor at that point. And on the Had way. Had you ever been to the doctor before? Not that I could recall. <laughs> uh, that uh, on the way, John was there crying and going on to Union to Dr. Switzer. And. Uh, I was crying. Daddy said, if you don't hush crying, your head's going to swell up. So that stopped me. <laughs> but Dr. Switzer put some stitches in, and mm-hmm. I, and to this day, I have an indentation in my skull mm-hmm. where I was hit with that. I often tell them that was why I could do so many things. It scattered my brains out a little bit. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, that, that was one of the things that uh, happened in the first grade. And then we used to run to a bus that we'd get after school. And in that same first grade, I got caught under the bus wheel. Fortunately, it didn't run totally over me. Just kind of scotched on me, and they pulled me out. Didn't get to go to school the next day because I was sore. But when I had Luke, a younger brother, was pulling me around in a wagon with a pillow on it to make me feel a little better, Mama said, well, if I'd known you was going to do that, I'd sent you to school today. Because <laughs> she believed in education. She believed mm-hmm. in education. And we, as we look for what we did in growing up to entertain ourselves and to work and play, we played baseball, but mm-hmm. uh, by our own rules, basically. Uh, we first uh, was made out of, we'd get a center, find a center out of a regular baseball and wrap flower sack threads on it and wrap it around and around and, and take a needle and sew that together, and that became our ball. Uh, a little later, we did, when Gene Smith, a cousin, was playing baseball in Greenwood, gave us a couple of baseballs so uh we we had something a little bit different we played out there in in the pasture did uncle carlisle play baseball oh, yeah. with y'all well oh, i knew yes. that he all had played all i was put together okay. and, and the neighbors in the in the, in the community mm-hmm. would come together and we'd play ball there uh if we wanted to try to play football they didn't have a football team at, at uh at the high at the school nor a baseball it was only basketball but uh We'd take a burlap bag, we called them a croaker sack then, that the fertilizer came in and roll it up and wrap it up and tie it up and we could throw it and play football. You couldn't kick it much, but that was one thing. Another uh, game that we had that we played, I thought was uh, was great for us, uh, it was peg. Peg? You'd, You'd take a stick about... 18 inches long and trim it with a point on each end mm-hmm. and trim it on one side to make it a little flat and then you'd take a stick about four feet long and uh, you'd lay the peg down on the ground and, and push a little the dirt make a little trough underneath mm-hmm. that and you'd pick the peg up in the air and hit it and then how the distance was you'd say well it'll take this many steps and um, the others that we're playing on, on, on we're playing with you, if they could make that number of steps, if you said thirty steps, oh, okay, then that was there. Okay, they, they got theirs. it. If they didn't make it, you kept it. Mm-hmm. And one hundred and fifty would be the game. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I think back on it, it is a learning factor. We didn't have any pencil and paper, so mm-hmm. you kept your your numbers, and your your game, and other games all in your head together, mm-hmm. so no one could could jump and cheat on you, you'd say, you know. <laughs> and uh, then the other thing was our hand coordination. We didn't know it at that time, that that helped you in learning to read. Mm-hmm. So uh, these are, were the type of things that we had. And another thing that we did to entertain ourselves is an old wagon wheel, the base of it up there, it had these metal rims around mm-hmm. it, and they were round. And we'd get those off old abandoned wagon wheels and take that and take a forked stick. And then you could run that around in the yard or up the road and back is another thing that we entertained I would say. To just with. roll the roll the wheel with the stick? Yes. Okay. You just have it on the ground and you mm-hmm. just push it along okay. and uh, and race each other with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I, one of the things there that uh, June, I think, really wanted me to tell, or you won, mm -hmm. Jane, was that uh, the croquet. Mm -hmm. uh, Mama, we Santa Claus brought us a croquet <laughs> set. <laughs> set, and uh, we were playing, and Ed was uh, the older brother. He'd just take it, roll the ball wherever he wanted, so he'd have a great shot through. And I kept complaining about his cheating. And he said, "You don't like it?" I said, "No." So he slapped me upside the face, you know. <laughs> so I, it kind of, you know. Um, uh, we were Scotch, Irish, German, and English. And so I don't know where it was the Scotch tem uh, temper <laughs> or the Irish or the German or what it was. But anyway, we had chicken cups we made out there. With about, it'd take cordwood and split it in about two inches square. And you'd make it a, a, a pin, and then you'd take those and put over the top so that your chickens couldn't get out of it. And mm -hmm. you put the hen in there, and the little chickens could go in and out. So I proceed out there and pick up one of those that's about two inches square and come back and I fram him with it. <laughs> and uh, I mean, he raised his arm, so I caught him under the arm and he started for me and uh, I hit him again and uh, broke the cordwood. Mm -hmm. So uh, he grabbed up a piece to, to take after me and I made circles. I ran through uh, the, the breezeway because mm -hmm. I couldn't cut into the kitchen. I was running mm -hmm. too fast. <laughs> and on the circle around, I went into there, and he came in after me, and John got mad at him because he was coming in there and struck at him, missed him, and hit the table and broke the end of the table off. Well, Mama got upset, and so that upset Daddy. <laughs> and when Mama got upset, he got upset. Mm -hmm. And he was really bald-headed with just a little bit of hair around, and it looked like he just raised up. <laughs> and so he took off after Ed, and Ed was kind of coasting along because Daddy was injured in World War I, and he got uh, gas in his leg, and he didn't think he could run very well. So he looked back, and Daddy was just reaching for his collar. <laughs> he said, I had to turn on the speed to get away from him at that time. But we, 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 uh, we, but did you know. He, did he never caught him? He never caught him because he turned on the speed after that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was uh, the thing, you know, and I guess it, it, we uh, had our disagreements with, with, uh, with different things there. And one thing I think uh, y'all wanted me to talk about was the burnt rug. Mm -hmm. The burnt rug. Uh, <laughs> Mama and Daddy had gone out to Foster Chapel Methodist Church for the adults had a chicken stew that night. And Leighton Garner came to stay with us at the time. And we had we'd make locust beer. You would take the locusts and break them up in that sweet part in the the locust locust, locust limbs. Tree. The locust be, uh, be the branches locust. from the locust. No, it's no branches. It, if you ever see a locust tree, it's got these long locusts on it, and on the part on the other, it's got a sweet substance in it. Mm -hmm. And we used to eat that sweet substance. But we'd break that up and put it in a barrel, mm -hmm. and then we'd slip some cornmeal in there, hoping mm -hmm. it would do something a little mm -hmm. different. But uh. It, as we did that, uh, uh, we had that, and Ed had the key that night to uh, to the smokehouse. Well, let me ask this. Did Grandmama know y'all were doing that? Oh, yes. Yeah, that was a, it. Didn't, it was I like don't a, think it had okay. a great deal of alcohol in it, but it was brackish taste. Okay. And um, so uh, we, we would do that. So he had the key to the house, and only him and Layton would get into the locust beer. And John mm. kept saying, let them have some. That was me and Luke and Russell. And he wouldn't, so... He held up his bottle, and John threw a hammer across there and knocked it out of his <laughs> mouth. And uh, we <laughs> and knocked the bottle out of his mouth. Right, yeah, it broke with a it. hammer. <laughs> and uh, into a fight they had business. In the process, it turned the churn over. Uh huh. So that broke up the fight. We grabbed the churn and and we cleaned up best we could, and we cleaned it up with water. And and I don't know why we put kerosene on it to dry it <laughs> out, but when we lit it, it burnt a hole in the rug. So. <laughs> <laughs> we sat there and looked about it, and then we turned around and turned the whole big rug around and put it up under the furniture so <laughs> Mom and Daddy couldn't see couldn't it see when the they hole. came back. <laughs> and when they moved, they never understood why the corner of the rug under the furniture was burned. <laughs> Y'all never we, confessed. <laughs> well, after we got grown <laughs> and went out. But, you know, it, it sounds like that, but... Um, we had our disagreements, and, and Mama used to say she never understood. She'd just pray that one wouldn't kill each wouldn't other kill and go each to other. the penitentiary. Mm -hmm. But if one got in trouble in a fight outside, mm -hmm. there was six that mm -hmm. was in the, in, in, in the array. Right. And so it was that it, it was a close knit group growing up, and. Uh, well, y'all we, were very close together in age, too. Yes, there were six of us within a 10-year period. So, yeah. So mm -hmm. there's an old bus that came by the house, kind of filled up at our place mm -hmm. when it wouldn't come up there. And, uh, you know, uh, 
So wait a minute. So you weren't walking to school barefooted in the snow like we always thought? Well, when you walk from the original <laughs> farm, you walked up hill both ways to catch it. Okay. Up the hill you, and both uh, ways, up and both, both ways, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, we, we went to school and, and barefooted with overalls on mm -hmm. until until we right, picked enough cotton and sold enough cotton to go up to Mr. Bobby Little's. And we'd get shoes and new overalls and an uh, overall jacket for the winter. And mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bobby would always give us a Coke after that, mm -hmm. you know. And then we thought that was a great time to go mm -hmm. up there and get new shoes. Star brand. Star, star, brand, brand, star shoes. brand shoes. Star brand shoes. And uh, we would uh, own at that. And Mama had another thing. She had a cardinal rule that uh, you never went to the table without a shirt. Right. So if I was going to work, I'd hang my shirt on the post out at the well. When I'd come back in from plowing, I'd pick up my shirt and put it on. Mm -hmm. Well, Lou came in one day and sat down without it, and, you know, she didn't say a word. She had a long, good leather strap, and she got up and got to the <coughs> She gave him one, one lick with it on his back, and he said, Mom, I'm going to put on my shirt. <laughs> and no one ever went to, to the table without a shirt after that. Well, she, she had a way she, of being, of being she fortunate. Was a, yeah, she was a formidable woman, and to have uh, um, it, it, raised all of y'all and, and well, handled you know, everything. Well, you just and, reminded me of something that I think I didn't even have it down here, but uh, Bill Comer came to spend the night with us, and there was three of us in a double bed there laughing and kicking, and Mama came in and said, now you boys get quiet and go to sleep. Well, you know, we didn't. <laughs> she came in there with a strap, and she was saying, I mean, I told y'all to get quiet, and Bill said, Miss Louise, you're hitting me. And she says, I mean to. <laughs> <laughs> Because when you when you came to our house and sat under the table and got in the bed, you abided by her brothers, That's no right. matter who they were. Right. But anyway, this was uh, that's the thing we did. And uh, you know, uh, one of the things that Daddy always said he wanted his mules rested on the weekend. Mm -hmm. So on Sunday afternoon, we'd go down into the pasture. Oh, it was, it was, I guess it was about twenty five or thirty acres in that pasture, down to different places through the woods, catch the mules, and we'd ride them. He never knew about it. But, you know, after about the third or fourth time, those bills learned, and we couldn't catch them anymore. Ah. <laughs> they, they learned what to do because they would run. We couldn't hem them up anymore, so we ended that, <laughs> that, uh, that Sunday afternoon job. Well, that's what was so much fun for us going back to the farm uh, as children. We get the mule, and the mule would get sick and tired of drop of riding us all around and take us under the barn and rake everybody off. Well, that was part of down at Brother Kyle. <laughs> he bought the old heart farm from Daddy, mm -hmm. and that's where we was going back to. We went down mm -hmm. there. Uh, I think you know that uh, Dad was a renter. That meant he owned his own mules and his own uh, equipment and everything, and we had usually a sharecropper that was there. And on Grandma's farm, she got a fourth of all the cotton and corn, but the rest was... Uh, was was I was a, a sharecropper got fifty percent. Daddy came with a fourth off of that, mm -hmm. but that that's the way we we worked on it. Well, and that's th how y'all lived. Yes, I mean, that was uh -huh, mm -hmm. right. And uh, then Sunday church was a must. Mm -hmm. You never you never cut Sunday school in church. And if you was in in there, Mom always looked around to see how close we were up to the front. You dare not be too far to the back of the church. Well, were, were you, if you were in the back, could you scoot out or either you no, could talk you or dare something? No, you not. You mm -hmm. dare not. No, no. Mm -hmm. no that was not that. And uh, another thing, school was a must. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we must study. We must do our homework. She checked on that. She said that school was, was one of the most important things that we were doing mm -hmm. in growing up, and we had to have some education. And we forced in a little small country school. Uh, there was uh, 10 in my graduating class, uh, 6 in John's, and I think 12, 15 was the largest. But we had a good math teachers. We had good English teachers, good history teachers. Now, science was just a little reading in the book because they didn't have it. That's any true. laboratories or anything no like lab, that? Labs, no experiments. Uh, no telephone, no mm -hmm. typewriters. Uh, but it was, uh, we got a good fundamental education in mm -hmm. English, math. I mean, in English and math and, and history. And when I went to the University of South Carolina as a naval aviation cadet, I could handle the math and the English in great stride. Mm -hmm. Had a little problem in, in physics and things like this, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in mechanical drawing. In fact, I thought a French curve was a good-looking lady until I got down there and it was part <laughs> of a writing instrument. 
a drawing instrument. Drawing instrument. A drawing instrument. But uh, uh, this, this was uh, this was that. And I, I, one of the things that I learned growing up out there is I had FFA uh, agriculture, uh, uh, and with uh, Mr. James was our teacher, and he was also the superintendent. And we was check. He was checking on practices, farm practices, and one of the guys there is making a lot more cotton per acre than we were making. And I looked at it and I said, our land is good as that land. And I wonder what the difference is. And then I figured it out. They were putting a lot more fertilizer down. Mm, mm-hmm. So it was my turn. It was coming into the war years and things like that. So it was my turn. I was in the uh, ninth grade at the time and to run to the distributor to put the fertilizer down. So I just opened it up and mm-hmm. put all the fertilizer he had bought for the year under cotton. <laughs> And we started time plant corn. I said, Daddy, what are we going to do about fertilizer? He says, out there in the barn. I said, no, sir. He said, what happened to it? I said, I put it under the cotton. Well, I, he got a little quite upset about that, and I just prayed that we'd have a good cotton year. <laughs> and we did. And you did. We almost doubled our production. Okay. And, uh, so after that, uh, he uh, said, I'd say something about fertilizer. He said, you put it down, I'll get it for you. Ah. But uh, that was some of the things that you were learning in school mm-hmm. and how, how those things happened. You know, um, and we did have a good crop. Um, I, you know, we, we uh, always had four or five hogs, and one would go from four to 500 pounds. And hog killing day was a, was a day I used to enjoy, but then it was cold. I always wait till one cold day, mm-hmm. and uh, you go down and kill a hog. I eventually, for the last two or three years, I was a guy that used a twenty two rifle to shoot them in the head before we'd stick them to bleed them. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, it was an all-day job after mm-hmm. you cleaned them and cut them up and everything. And uh, you'd have lard. You'd mm-hmm. cut up uh, the fat and you'd cook the lard. And mm-hmm. uh, as a result of that, you'd have cracklings and crackling mm-hmm. cornbread. It was always a great, and they people still value cracking cornbread mm-hmm. today. But uh, in that, and you'd grind up the sausage and you'd put the hams and shoulders in with some salt on them, and then. After a period of time, after that, it, that salt had drawn most of the, uh, a lot of the fluid out of the ham and shoulder. Mm-hmm. Then he'd use uh, molasses and black pepper and red pepper and put a solution on that and rub it and hang them up to finish curing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's always had to take the minister, uh, what they used to back then call a mess. It was about three pounds of sausage. Mm-hmm. And all the community and the minister always lived good on sausage in the, in the wintertime. <laughs> but uh, it was a great thing, and that we did that. And you know we wait till he always waited till the day that a frost came on to potato patch sweet potatoes, and we'd have to go up and pull the old vines before the frost got off. And uh, we had a wait a minute, big, so the so the frost had to lay on them. Well, he he shouldn't have waited, but he always did. He always okay. waited till that cold day, and uh, we have to go up and get them off before the frost met on, uh, on it, and and then we plow out the potatoes, and, mm-hmm. uh, and you would uh, have a potato kill. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'd take and put pine straw down, and then you'd put a, a corn stalks would come up on that, and then put pine needles on top of that, and then you'd put dirt on top of that, and you'd leave a hole down your bottom so you could get in and out, and there's a little open at the top for the moisture to get out on the curing of the potatoes. But anyway, one day we was at the potatoes, and we had a little old beagle dog that we had several at that, but he was a jump dog for rabbits. And he jumped one, and that rabbit came around. <laughs> potato patch and John picked up a potato and threw at him and hit him and knocked him over. So we had fried rabbit that night for supper. <laughs> and uh he hit him with the potato. <laughs> but uh another time we were picking cotton in the in a shorty as we called him, he jumped the rabbit and he came around through the cotton patch and as he'd come by one he'd throw off his pick sack and start running after him and yelling. He'd just come around we got around to all six of us. We were running after him and yelling. That rabbit ran down there and just fell over in the woods. <laughs> so we had fried rabbit again that night. Uh, but it was a it was a lot of fun and growing up and developing. We had a balance between uh, having your way if nobody objected, but mm-hmm. uh, but the rules of the house were observed, mm-hmm. and Mama and saw that, and Daddy just backed her up on everything, mm-hmm. and um, it it went uh, doing this. But you know, as the war came along. Uh, we had to double up, and Ed was vo- volunteer. No, John was the first one volunteering the Navy, and then Ed volunteered afterwards. And Luke and Russell and myself found ourselves doing the work that Six had done before. Mm-hmm. And uh, it it was uh, we had to stretch out and work harder. 
I remember, you know, one one night we had to get the cotton and had a bale of cotton ready, so we packed it on, finished it up at ten o'clock at night into the wagon. And uh so I was up before daylight and with a lantern and hooked up the mute and sitting under the gin at, at uh, up at Kelly that day mm -hmm. up there for the first one to get gin, they got back and came back in the seeds. I left them in the wagon, and I got ready and made the third period back at school that mm -hmm, day. Mm -hmm. It was a thing that it was, as I say again, it was important to Mom and Daddy that we, we get in school. Mm -hmm. And uh, and she believed that that was that. And so we they worked around for us to that, and I think it it, it carried its way because, uh, don't want to brag, but I was valedictorian of the class. Yeah, well, y'all all were very, very successful uh, and that's what the I careers. was going to say. Mm -hmm. I, uh, out of the six, three of us graduated with B BS degrees. I was John was electrical engineer, and mm -hmm. I was ag education, and later in, in administration, it became school superintendent for eighteen years, and I was member of, and chairman of the South Carolina State Board of Education, mm -hmm. and I was chairman of the advisory council of vocational technical education for a number of years for the state of South Carolina mm -hmm. and vice president of the National Association. Mm -hmm. So we had a background there that they gave us that. And Luke, we thought, was a little slow. He wouldn't stay very much. <laughs> and after he got married, he went into, uh, started working in the bank. And, and would you believe it? He graduated from Louisiana State University, graduate school of banking. And the only time he went to a four-year institution in college was to see his brothers graduate. <laughs> and uh, Kyle I was the oldest one, and we think that he had an appointment or, uh, to go to West Point, but he got mad instead. Mm -hmm. And he uh, dealt in uh, land and mm -hmm. mine and set in land. And uh, Well, he was the one that actually made all the money, much well, more money than you guys. <laughs> He could have bought out his three brothers that went to college. That's right. <laughs> he, uh, but he, he uh, had a knack for doing things. He was really sharp individual. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he worked with the AAA program of farm surveying mm -hmm. and, and uh, this, and also as a mail carrier and, uh, and a farmer mm -hmm. all together. And he, he was able to mash all of it three together, mm -hmm. and he was very successful. And did, well, did he was on the board of the South Carolina Rural Co-op. He was Wasn't, chairman he was of chairman the Broad Co-op for 40-something okay. years. Was chairman when he passed okay. away. Yeah. And uh, he is also chairman of the union of that Jonesville District School Board. Mm -hmm. And then I think chairman of the county school mm -hmm. board. Mm -hmm. for a number. He was on that, that school board and uh, combined about 30-something years. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. he was he was very successful and he could handle things quite well. And uh, uh, it, it was uh, it was there and in the, part. And then Uncle, Ru Uncle Russell was... Um, uh, became the the recreation director mm -hmm. for the city and county of Spartanburg, mm -hmm. uh, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. He was a coach prior to that, mm -hmm. and uh, he coached. And uh, John retired from a AT and T as an electrical engineer. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Ed was killed in the war. He was. We lost him at Iwo Jima. He, mm -hmm. he was the last aircraft carrier we had sunk mm -hmm. at Iwo Jima, and uh, he was a radio man. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, one of the Kamasachi planes that came in, 26, the captain wrote, Mama came at 6, got through, they shot the others down. Mm -hmm. But the captain survived. Mm -hmm. But they lost a lot of men mm -hmm. uh, there at that point in time. That uh, was the, I asked you that this morning, that was the Bismarck Sea Bismarck that he was C. on. It was mm -hmm. a small carrier, not one mm -hmm. like we have today. But uh, that carrier, they went through to China. They were the first ship that we had going through the China Sea during mm -hmm. the war, and they sunk one or two ships at Leyte uh, when mm -hmm. they went back in for that. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, he never, he was real good. He never got sick at mm -hmm. sea. Mm -hmm. uh, John said if a ship, he was 42 months out in the Pacific. And mm -hmm. uh, he said if they came back in, he stayed over 24 hours, he got sick going back <laughs> out. But if it didn't go before, if it was 21 hours, he said I was all right. But 24 hours, it it, it went under. And, uh, well, I want to stop a minute because I want to talk about y'all's nicknames because everybody oh, well, had uh, a nickname. Yeah, Is that on uh, your list? Well, it's not on the list okay. I have down, but Kyle, I, he was always smiling. Smiley. Smiley. Uncle Smiley, yeah. always Uncle Smiley. And Ed, we called him fat. He was a little heavier. Mm -hmm. And they called John. He was pretty good size. He weighed 220, finished high school, but he's very strong, mm -hmm. very strong. Mm -hmm. And we called him Wobble. Mm -hmm. And uh, my name was Yank for a long time till I had a ball glove. And uh, 
I I'd really like good strong cheese, and we <laughs> we'd have a cheese and uh, I had had rabbit gums. I'll cover that in a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had bought me a glove, a glove from San Roebuck, mm-hmm. and we were playing baseball up there. You know, pick up baseball mm-hmm. there in in for school and. Uh, I traded Luke out of uh, his cheese biscuit it, that morning at, at breakfast. We put them in, Mom had put them in, put them in, toast them. Oh, they mm-hmm. were great. And uh, so he had the ball glove for that day. And <laughs> my mom was up there and said, Frank, get your glove down there from Luke. And I said, I can't do it. I said, why? I said, I swapped him a cheese biscuit to play with the glove today. So <laughs> my name changed from Yank to Cheese at that time. Uh-huh. And uh, Luke was kind of tall and he was slim. We called him Boney and... And uh, Russell, for some reason, we called him Speck. Well, I just assumed he always had freckles or something, did he? Yeah, he yeah. did. And that was where and Speck I came from. Named Speck, and most of the people still know him. Call him Speck. Speck. Well, it's all, always all been it. Uncle and, Speck. And uh, it it was there. One of the other things I was saying during the war, you know, we we uh, uh, Mr. Turner, Sam Turner was a coach and principal. He was drafted, and Mr. Derek came in teaching ag and. He was coaching us too, and he was drafted and, and went in. He went into the Air Force. Sam went into the, was into the Army, and our superintendent that we'd get get there. He said, "I just don't have time to do any coaching. If y'all want a basketball team, you can have it. I'll go with you." But he said, "You're gonna have to coach yourself." So, I coached the my, my senior year, and I coached the boys' basketball and the girls' basketball mm-hmm. team. And uh, Speck still lasts about it. We were playing Mayo up in Spartanburg County. And it, at that time, you had the home officials. You didn't have officials like we have that today. travel around. Mm-hmm. And they were calling one foul after another on us. And I called Tom out. And I went to the official. And I said, you know, the law of averages will give us a foul sometimes. <laughs> and the official says, son, we're not calling by the law of averages. <laughs> <laughs> It, it was just it's this, yeah. but anyway. But y'all were y'all won a state championship. Well, yes, we we were up for, on my team when I was playing. We lost in the upstate finals. It had snowed that week, and we didn't have to practice. We played mm-hmm. up in uh, Simpsonville. Mm-hmm. We, we played up there on the court, and we were on the off because we hadn't been able to practice. We practiced on the outdoor court. Mm-hmm. In basketball, we practiced in a brogan shoes mm-hmm. and overalls. Mm-hmm. And when we were playing another school, we never gave out because if you got your gym shoes on and your basketball uniform, you were just free to float. Mm. Uh, but <laughs> but anyway, on the girls' coach, Miss Keller would go with the girls and go in at the half and with the mm-hmm. dressing rooms. And when I was able to go, and she'd call me when I'd go in and talk mm-hmm. to them about it. And one of the interesting things that uh, we were playing Hickory Grove, and that girls always beat us pretty bad, and we beat the boys pretty bad. So the, one of the officials didn't come, and they came to me about officiating. I said, I can't do it. They said, don't you know the air? I said, oh, I know it. And they said, well, well, what's wrong? I said, well, I'm coaching the girls. They said, that's all right. I said, if we call time out, I'm officiating. I'm going to go over and talk to, to the team from Kelly Pinckney. <laughs> and uh, they said, that's all right. So I did that for the first half, and the other official came in, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I was coaching the boys' team and playing with Bruce Emman got hurt. We were beating Hickory Grove right bad at that time with the boys. Of course, they cleaned us up on the girls. And he got hurt, and I picked him up and carried him off the court. And some of the people back out there tell me, they said, that's right, Grandpa, you take care of your grandson up there. <laughs> <laughs> but we, had a, we had, a, had a lot of fun in that. And, you know, it was, uh, we had a, a team. But we went to the semi uh, upstate finals, and we lost it on the upstate finals. Well, but, well, who uh, won this? Didn't someone win well, the state championship? Well, that was when Luke and, and Russ were playing. Okay. And we won, they won the state championship in Class C with an outdoor court. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and, and we'd always play games away. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when you were playing, the wind was blowing. you just throw it and kind of compensate for the wind. Uh-huh. Hoping it float into the basket mm-hmm. when you're doing it outside. But, uh yeah, and they formed the baseball team afterwards after I graduated mm-hmm. up there last year or so. And uh, Russ was all state pitcher, and he had a full scholarship to Newberry to pitch baseball mm-hmm. for Newberry College. And uh, uh, Guy Laval was the coach down there. It was interesting. It, that was the year they went from the limb to the twelfth grade when he graduated. Uh-huh. So they talked. He him had an extra to year. Union. Mm-hmm. He had an extra year, and he went down to Union High School. And Mom and Dad had moved off the farm down to Union mm-hmm. after we all got away uh, in, in that. And uh, 
So he played football with Union High School, and then he started playing basketball with him. And Buddy Val called him and said, uh, he sent word to him to come on down at the mid at the spring semester and it started. And, and he played, it was interesting, he played with Union High School on Friday nights. And the next next Wednesday night, he played with Newberry College. Mm-hmm. Wow. But, Daddy, uh, I want to stop you for a minute because I want you to talk about um, when they would come and tell Poppy about the stills being broken up. Oh. And you guys would run oh, in the I'm night. About rabbit hunting. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> we would go rabbit hunting. And, and down, uh, down, down the creek going on down the pack that river with about a mile or so from the house. Ran across one afternoon. We ran. We was rabbit hunting. Ran across a whiskey still, and so we uh, What's looked a at still? Uh, moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we uh, we we cut some reeds, and we got down, and they were ready to run. That you mean night. to 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 put it in the jars to sell? Well, is what you mean by to, that? What you have to do, you have to heat it, and it boils it, and it goes. The mash goes into. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, a vapor, more or less, and mm-hmm. then it proceeds into alcohol. Okay. And the drain, you run it through that, and, and uh, you have to have a fire. Well, it distills. Oil. Uh, yeah, yeah. Still. And so we cut a reed, and we drank beer, and covered it back up, and <laughs> went on hunting. Uh, <laughs> and uh, one time, Daddy's first cousin, Jim Fawcett, was the sheriff, and came by the house, and he had broke up a big steel down on the Buckmore place. And so we went down there. It was a six-foot diameter, and he had it on the side of his automobile on a running board back then. And uh, we went down and uh, collected a bunch of the beer because mm-hmm. it was still there. <laughs> well, and, did you uh, take jugs or something? We took jugs uh-huh. down there and let molasses jugs. We got out of the smokehouse and mm-hmm. it had been emptied. And... Uh, we got pretty inebriated, I guess, and we'd call old dad. <laughs> Some other word was, we're pretty high, you know, and nobody was wanted supper that night. Mama couldn't understand. We was afraid <laughs> to come into the house. <laughs> but, but it was a, growing up uh, down in the country in the farm. It was a, uh, it it was a great great experience there. You know, the thing about it is, I said, mom and daddy said education was important. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was really interesting that. Uh, uh, that uh, she went to school in a one-room schoolhouse. Mm-hmm. And she said that somebody went to Union was in the ninth or tenth grade. But in that one-room schoolhouse, she had Latin and, and algebra mm-hmm. and, and, and the, of course, English and history. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. was amazing to me that a one-room schoolhouse owned all the different kids that, that, that went up mm-hmm. there. And um, uh, she said that one year the teacher got sick and they had her to substitute for mm-hmm. the rest of the year and she taught the other students. <laughs> so she was a good teacher. Mm-hmm. She was a good teacher mm-hmm. and she saw that we did that. You know, uh, I, I say how we worked it hard. I remember that uh, Daddy said we had to plant oats, had to get them in the ground. It was time. We had said, Daddy, tomorrow afternoon is football, basketball practice. He said, get those oats in the ground. So we started real early. We worked through to 2 o'clock and uh, plant notes. And that time you had a distributor. You run three rows between your head to stay close to the cotton roots on two sides and one in the center to take care of the fertilizer that was left from the cotton. Mm-hmm. We worked through to 2 o'clock, came in and ate and cleaned up a little bit and walked a mile and a half to school to practice basketball and mm-hmm. come back at night. That was because we never got never got tired in playing a game of basketball, mm-hmm. and we were right resourceful. I remember I was, I was driving the wagon some way and broke the front axle, so uh, I said, "Daddy, I'll fix it." One okay, minute. one more minute. I said, "But I took that wagon, took a pattern of the, of the old one, carried it up to the shop at school, and with a drawing knife and, and a wood chisel and a bracing bit, I made a front axle, and it mm-hmm. worked." Well, good. But. Uh, uh, Jane, it, it's a, it's really a wonderful opportunity to sit down and chat. Mm-hmm. With. I've re- uh, did these stories from time to time, and and uh, it, it's been a great thing to drop back and review that as mm-hmm. we have at mm-hmm. home with my brothers and, yeah. and and with the children. And it's a great opportunity to express it, what country boys could could grow mm-hmm. up in Union County, out in the country, and how well you could succeed in life mm-hmm. if you really applied yourself. Right, right. The last thing I wanted to do, because I know this is your 
your favorite song. I wanted to sing, You Are My Sunshine. <laughs> my.